I've never worked with sorghum flour and gnocchi before. Who knows what's going to happen? Chris, please pack your knives and go. We want you to cook, test, and write the recipe for your dishes. Morning, chefs. For your recipe testers. Hopefully I set her up for success. I might not even have food to serve. The recipe is a sorghum gnocchi with green romesco, braised dandelion greens, and saucy salsa. Melissa's is ridiculous. Yeah, I can't even eat that. Melissa is clearly a strong cook, and this recipe failed her. To keep it simple, <laughs> I always tend to overcomplicate things, and I could see it as I was going through. I've written a cookbook before, so I should have known that I'm cooking for a home cook audience, essentially. And to be able to get all those steps done, there was many techniques involved. That was definitely my downfall. Going through the course of like creating menus, of course, there's that trial run. Of, let's put the sorghum in the gnocchi. Let's test the flour and see what that actually feels like. Is it going to make it dense? Going through competition, there's no time for that. Sometimes you swing and miss, and you kind of regret the outcome, but at least you can say that you went out trying. I would say the Fruit Loop Challenge. Just the scenery itself and being able to cook outside, that was an awesome experience, especially after being cooped up for so long. This dish was beautiful. Those little smoked grapes were so packed with flavor. The dish was really, really well balanced. The fruit wasn't sweet. You had a scallops, which adds salinity to the dish. Spectacular. Thank you. And also the one with the indigenous tribes. That's a wapto which is duck potato. We just harvested these for the first time in probably over 100 years. Wow. To be able to experience some of the products that a lot of people have not, and for them to share those experiences, those foods with us, and to cook them for them, that was an experience of its own. Herb crusted cod, that's my signature, and I wish I could have presented some form of variation of that to the judges. So I take parsley, chives, basil, mix it with panko breadcrumb, salt and pepper, coat one side of the cod, and then I just typically serve it with a basil almond puree and seasonal vegetables. So right now we're in the middle of spring and I toss in asparagus, peas, garbanzo beans, fava beans, and then some toasted almonds to really tie in the flavor from the basil, and some chiffonade basil also to help bring some brightness. I ended up shutting down the restaurant for a month after that. We only opened up for prefix menus where we know how many people are coming in, we know how much product we need to bring in, so there's absolutely no waste, essentially. We are now in spring season, so the weather's getting a little nicer, so we're able to open up, and a lot more people are feeling comfortable with coming out with all the vaccinations and everything, so we have the most reservations that we've had in, in months. It provided me the experience of a lifetime. It provided me with a lot of clarity, with a lot of growth internally, externally, of who I wanted to become and how I carry myself. And having those interactions with other owners, other executive chefs from around the country, it was eye-opening for me just to be able to learn so much from them who have been in the industry for a lot longer than I have. So being able to just soak in all that knowledge and wisdom from all of them and still be connected with them, it's a beautiful thing, it really is.